joyful and triumphant. O oh, come ye, O oh, come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him, born the King of angels. Oh, Christ the Lord. That's what we've come today. Welcome to Camp on Church. Welcome to Sunday Different. Welcome to our online carol service. We've come to sing praises to our God, to celebrate the birth of Jesus, to sing of Christmas. We're also going to be listening to words from the Bible, pointing to the significance of and import of these events. We're going to hear James Shelton uh, sharing some of his uh, reflections on Christmas. We're going to pray together, but but actually the big thing is we're going to be singing carols, listening again and engaging again with the music of this season. Quite a lot of traditional carols, one or two uh, newer items in there too. Our next item 
is actually going to be a uh, recording of a carol uh, by Year Four at the Vine, who uh, have sent a recording through, and it's it's a joy to be able to use that as part of our worship this morning. But let's pray as we've gathered, Lord. We come in the name of Jesus, and it is Him we celebrate. The Lord God made flesh among us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your great love and help us to celebrate. Send your Holy Spirit and warm our hearts afresh at this Christmas time. In Jesus' name. Amen. and grow out of our Christmas clothes. But the things we get from Christ this Christmas and always, hope, peace, joy and love will go with us all our life. Why do we like this fourth Advent candle? The fourth candle is the candle of love. Jesus is our love. He's with us always and loves us unconditionally through all the events in our lives, in birth and death, in joy and sorrow. We light this candle for love.
shepherds quake at the sight. Glory stream from heaven above, and behold, sing hallelujah. Christ the Savior. It is written in the book of Jeremiah. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, a king who will reign wisely and do what is just and right in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will live in safety. This is a name by which he will be called the Lord, our righteous saviour. It is written in the book of Isaiah, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and will call him Emmanuel. It is written in the book of Micah, But you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from old from ancient times. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they will live securely, for then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth. It is written in the book of Isaiah, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. A 
The very first Christmas was long, long ago. A girl called Mary had started to grow. Inside she carried a wee baby boy, and an angel was sent to tell of the joy. Yee! Angel and rocket! Angel and rocket! That's not in the story. Angels don't need rockets. Mary was speechless. She didn't know how. These things could have happened, but still she bowed. The angel then <gasps> made an appearance to Joe who was worried when Mary had started to show. But Gabriel said, You may find this odd. Just trust me, these things are all coming from God. Mary is carrying God's only son, the saviour of old, the long-promised one. So call his name Jesus, your maker in skin. He's come now to save all his people from sin. Meanwhile, great Caesar Augustus in Rome had made a decree Return to your home. For Joseph, this ruler meant Bethlehem town. So they rode on their donkey all the way down. Dad, 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 come in the end. What are you doing? She said they were riding on a donkey, not a helicopter. Fine, that's better. That's not in the story. Arriving in Bethlehem, Mary was blooming. But try as they might, no hotels had room in. They asked one innkeeper, Sir, are you able? The innkeeper said, Oh, go on, use my stable. So Jesus was born in a cold cattle shed. With nowhere to lay him, a trough was his bed. Wait, what? That could be in the story. Actually, it is. Yes, sir. Now out in the fields, some angels appeared to shepherds who cowered and all of them feared. One angel said, 
Peace, I bring you good news. The Saviour is born, so put on your shoes. The shepherds all hurry to old Bethlehem to worship the baby who'd been born for them. Away in the east, there lived some wise men who followed a star wherever it went. They knew it would lead them to worship the king, so gold, incense and myrrh they did bring. It's getting crowded now. Do you think there's room? Now here round the baby, the world is invited. The strongest and weakest, they all are united. From wise men to shepherds, from angels to sheep. From shiniest heights to the darkest deep. So come to the manger, see God become small. The true Christmas story has room for us all. It's bigger than you thought. Maybe it is in the story. Today's reading comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 1 to 5, and verses 9 to 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognise him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Thank you.
Good morning. It's great to be with you on this very joyful Sunday. In thinking about what I wanted to share with you today, I've been considering Christmases across my life, the different experiences of Christmas across 36 years. And I've been taken to a place where I've been considering the things that have changed across each of those years. It occurs to me that some things change annually. There are distinctly different features every time we celebrate Christmas. Just a couple of examples from my own life. When I was younger, probably like many young people, the, uh, the idea for a gift that topped my Christmas wish list would always change. Invariably, it tended to involve football, but it would be different each year. And I remember being huddled around the radio, awaiting the announcement of what song was at Christmas number one. That changed each year. Perhaps there are things that you can recall from your life that will have changed year to year. I also was considering things that were not one-offs, that perhaps have become these Christmas traditions that are unique to us and our families. Uh, for me, it seemed that these Christmas traditions revolve around how we celebrate Christmas, where we celebrate Christmas, and with whom we celebrate Christmas. But even Christmas traditions change. It seems that across different seasons of life, those traditions will inevitably have to be fine-tuned and tweaked This year, perhaps more than any year previous, we're going to be experiencing Christmas in a very different way. Things are inevitably going to be changing. They already have changed in many ways, but they will inevitably be changing as we live into next week. It's been a year where we've heard this refrain, the strangest of times so frequently in all we've been reading and in the conversations that we've been having with one another. This year has been very strange. A global pandemic is not something that any of us had anticipated. And yet I wonder when people have tried to communicate their feelings about this year and use that phrase, the strangest of times, if perhaps there has also been something being communicated about the unsettling feeling of insecurity that we've all experienced. I think as humans we derive a sense of security often from what we do, who we see, and the aspects of life that bring us fulfillment. In many ways all of these sources of security have been shaken and some people have completely lost those things. There has been immense loss, there's been loss of life and there has been a collective sitting with our own mortality. We have felt insecure. And yet today we've heard in one of our readings, a short passage from Micah, this prophet who is talking about the one who will come and in whom they shall live secure. In all of my thinking about Christmas has gone by and the things that change, there's one thing that has never changed. There is one constant. And that is the story at the heart of Christmas itself. This story of a baby born and laid in a manger. It's a story that we're all so familiar with because it's unchanging. But this unchanging story is not meant to be packed away with Christmas decorations. 
once we've finished our celebrations. It's a gift that we are to receive and to take with us as we live into the weeks and the months of the year ahead. Because the story doesn't end here at Christmas. This baby grows up. This baby becomes a boy who we read grows in favour with God and with man. And this boy grows up to be a man of around the age of 30 before he enters into his public ministry. As something of an aside, I'd invite you to sit and contemplate that sometime. The years of Jesus' life that we don't know a lot about. But actually there's real value in thinking about the experiences that he will have been afforded in relative obscurity that contributed to him becoming this man who in his public ministry lived in such a radical way. It challenged and changed those around him. In his humanity, he he spoke in, in, in stories, in parables and taught those who would listen. He embodied something of this teaching that radically challenged those around him. And in his divinity, he performed miracles. He turned everything upside down. He changed everything. But he wasn't the messianic king that the people were expecting. Jesus, the man, lived and died in a way that was unexpected. But it changes everything. So how and why does this change everything? Well, if we think just about the course of human history, the way we record time, and the very fact that we sit here today celebrating uh, in anticipation the coming of Christ at Christmas. In ways that we all experience, this child, this boy, this man changed so much. But he also changes something in a personal way, in a relational way. Jesus actually changes the way that we experience life, the way that we experience joy and hope and the way that we experience times of challenge, of difficulty, and of suffering. In one of our other readings today from John, we have heard that Jesus was the light that shines in the darkness, the light that shines in times of darkness, the true light which enlightens everyone. I will testify to this for all of my life because I've experienced the truth in this. When the promise of Jesus and the person of Jesus gets in here, it changes everything. It really does. When it moves from an idea, a story that we hear, to something that we allow to penetrate our hearts, It's transformative. It changes the way that we experience life, the way we see things. And it changes us towards God's goodness, towards all of the ways that God has guided us towards his nature through Jesus being amongst us and through his life being recorded in this way. So when that story gets in here, what are we really talking about? We're talking about security. Security that is solid as a rock. And the reason it's so solid is because it never changes. This child changes everything because it never changes. And so... 
as we live through this Christmas and we live through the year to come. I think the gift to each and every one of us is an invitation. An invitation to receive this child anew. To receive the promises that this child brings, the prophecies this child fulfills. To receive those things into our lives in a new way. Because he can and will change everything for us. Because it's firmly set in a way that doesn't change. And it is in this child in whom we will live secure. Amen. In a bleak midwinter, frosty wind may blow, a stood hard as iron, water like a stone, snow. Carol invites us to think about how we respond to the Christmas story. How do we respond to what God has done? He broke into history 
in Jesus Christ. And nothing has been the same or will ever be the same since. God is rescuing his people. Let's pray now. Lord, we come before you now and pray first for ourselves. How would you have us respond to this good news? Warm our hearts afresh, we pray. And in a moment of quiet, just open yourselves to God afresh. And let's pray also for those who are our nearest and dearest. Maybe there's somebody particular who, who comes to mind. Let's lift those people to God. Maybe there are people in our wider circle of friends neighbours. Is there someone who's requested prayer or who you know needs God's touch at the moment? Let's pray for that person or those people. We pray for our wider community of, of Camborne, place where we live. If you live somewhere else, maybe you want to pray for that place. And seek God's blessing on the place, the communities where we live. And our nation we pray for. And the wider world What's God bring to mind as we lift ourselves to him in this regard? What does he prompt in our hearts? Lord, do your work among us. Do your work within us and in far-flung places. Do your work, Lord. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. We're going to continue in prayer as Jesus taught us. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. As we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours. Now and forever. Amen. 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 The herald angels sing Glory to the newborn King The peace on earth and mercy mild God and sin is reconciled Joyful all ye nations rise Join the triumph of the skies With angelic hosts proclaim Christ is born in Bethlehem Hark the herald angels sing Glory to the newborn King Christ by heart.
So we're coming to the end of our time uh, together. In a moment, we're going to have a trailer for what's going to be happening next Sunday, which is another carol service, Carols with Compassion. You can see a wee trailer for that. That'll be on uh, next Sunday on the 27th and we've got various things happening. We have got all things being well, uh, an opportunity to sing uh, carols together on Christmas Eve outside the church. Uh, midnight communion service, which you'd need to book for. Um, and our Christmas morning Zoom celebration. We've got those things to, to look forward to. Um, and also our Zoom nativity of course, uh, this afternoon as well. Uh, if you're wanting to log into that, uh, details are on our um, in the pastoral letter. So uh, let's pray God's blessing on us now. Christ, who by his incarnation gathered into one things earthly and things heavenly, fill us with peace and goodwill and make us partakers of the divine nature and the blessing of God Almighty Father Son and Holy Spirit be upon you rest with you and flow through you this Christmas time and always in the name of Christ Amen Enjoy a night of Carols with Compassion, featuring Martin Smith, Loreen Cato, Noel Robinson, Philippa Hanna, Graham Kendrick, Ellie Limebear, Di Woolridge, Hillsong London and the London Community Gospel Choir. This is an unforgettable evening full of Christmas carols as well as readings from around the world. Oh, oh.